Workforce nerds. Workforce nerds. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Today I have my friend Cami Eakin, CEO of Career Path Services. We just finished filming at um, down at Fox. Uh, thank you for joining me. How was it? It was fun. <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> Sure. It was a blur, right? It was a blur. It, it always is. really fast. It does. It does. So today we were talking about, and we are on, on today's podcast, um, what do you do when you feel like you're the only one that can't get a job? Yeah. Everybody's hiring, but not you. And you have some experience. You have, you've talked to people um, professionally, personally that have experienced this. Yeah. What are they saying? So, well, it is so discouraging, right? If everybody and everywhere you look says, oh, anybody can get a job right now. All you have to do is just walk into a place and you get a job. So if Not you've been true. walking into places that say they're hiring and you've been applying and you haven't gotten a job yet, it can be really disparaging. And I'm hearing all kinds of things, right? Like if you don't interview well, if you are nervous, if you have things that, you know, maybe in your past that make it difficult for you to apply, or you can't get past the gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. um, and so even though someone may say they're hiring, um, you may not be able to get even past your resume mm -hmm. to get in to get an interview. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really have been thinking a lot about what does that do to a person's self-esteem and how does that then further impact their ability to get back out and do it again? Mm -hmm. What's the answer? Oh, well, I think it starts with self-confidence. You have to be able to take an inward look and figure out, okay, wait, this no that I'm getting is not about me personally. It is something else out mm -hmm. of sight of my control. So what can, what do I have control over? Mm -hmm. I can revisit my skills and abilities. Mm -hmm. I can make a list of what my values are. Mm -hmm. I can think about the jobs that I've done in the past, the ones that I like and the ones that I don't like, and figure out like what were the common themes the, of what worked and what didn't work mm -hmm. in those environments. And then I think that it really comes down to self-talk. So I am a big fan for, you know, power posing, mm -hmm. um, putting affirmations up um, about yourself. I am capable. I am valuable. I have infinite worth as a human being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, sometimes we have to tell ourselves those things to build our self-confidence up. And then I think another key is like talking to a trusted friend mm -hmm. um, and or a colleague, somebody that you have respect for and say, hey, can you help me take a look at um, my resume, take a look at my, um, maybe do some interviewing with me, mm -hmm. those kinds of things that would help um, you evaluate, like with a neutral third party, mm -hmm. how things are going. I can remember a long time ago when I decided I was going to have a career change and I was applying for jobs and I was like, I wonder why I can't get a job. You know, no one's even calling me back. Well, I didn't realize that when I quickly was typing my resume, I had transposed some letters and um, I, it misspelled some words, like the city that I lived in. So those kinds of things by not going back and picking up, those are the things that kind of um, set you aside instead of set you apart. Because mm -hmm. you want to be set apart, not set aside. Absolutely. So with the self-talk, <clears throat> We, we all do it, right? So something, you know, especially if it's repetitive, is not going our way, and we start getting dead on ourselves more than anyone else ever could. We start getting dead on ourselves. Um, any insight on how to stop that pattern? When, it, when it's starting, how do you stop it? Well, I, ha I can speak again from personal experience because I have that voice in my head that will tell me that I am not enough mm -hmm. or I whatever, fill mm -hmm. in the blank. Um, and so I think that you have to, you can do things like um, physically, oops, I'm not supposed to snap, but I'm gonna <laughs> snap. Um, you can snap your fingers to help you remember to come out of it. You okay. can repeat um, mantras to yourself. You can distract yourself. You can start a list of um, positive attributes instead of negative mm -hmm. attributes. And sometimes you just have to say, be quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to let you in. I like the snap. 
I like the snap too because it kind of reminds me to snap out of it, mm-hmm. right? Because again, I think sometimes, <clears throat> well, I should say it, it's very real when you are struggling with self-esteem or rejection or whatever those things are that are contributing to you not being able or feeling able to go out and do the things that you want to do. Those are real. Those are real struggles and real challenges. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to change your environment for a minute and get out of that. And sometimes you need to go find some extra help to talk to. Mm-hmm. You spend a lot of time um, as CEO of Career Path leading from the heart, talking about heart work. How does that play into this? Well, I think it starts with our caring for the work that we do and caring about the people that we serve. And I think it extends into ourselves, right? So hmm. actually heart work is, talks about an internal starting spot, not an external starting mm-hmm. spot. So we all have to start with our own work. Um, and then I think that it is um, about encouraging, empowering, and helping people connect to their why. And it starts, again, from the inside out. Um, it really does begin there. If you think about the hierarchy of needs, um, this is a similar thing. You start with the inside work, and then you work your way up. The interview is kind of the last thing at the top of the pyramid or, or the getting of the job. There's a lot of steps that go before then. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> During the last recession, we saw a lot of individuals who were displaced and unemployed for quite a long time. When they came back in to see us and they were applying and, and um, experiencing the same thing we're talking about now, we were working with them and, and they said um, they, they were so hard on themselves. Uh, they were you know, unemployed, they'd gained weight, sometimes a significant amount of weight, their interview clothes no longer fit. And when we were <clears throat> learning from them and with them, what we found is um, going to get a haircut, going to even you know Goodwill and buying a new outfit and making yourself feel good, presentable, uh, many, many times changed the process so much so that it was surprising to me. Um, they just needed to sort of change the environment, right? right? Uh, you know, sort of change how you feel and you're presenting a different feeling um, externally in interviews. Um, Career Path does a lot of work with people um, across the state. Um, how do you guys help folks that need to um, re-empower themselves, um, access to clothing, whatever that might look like? Well, there's a, like a full myriad of things that you do. In fact, I was talking to an employee last week before in prep for this work because he wrote a curriculum for the customers that he works with called From the Inside Out. Mm. And it really, he does start at that very beginning point of helping people um, identify their skills, understand what they're good at. And then there's the simple things, right? You said, well, maybe not simple, but there's the things like changing your environment. You get the haircut, you get the new clothes, you go out for a walk when you're feeling stressed out. Um, you you change your environment up. You maybe, this is what I used to do with my kids, we might clean the bedroom so that we can clear the clutter and be able to think a little bit differently. Um, and then I think there's the other preparation part. So one of the things that almost every single um, program that we operate does is talks about um, make sure that when you're going to go interview or even when you're feeling kind of down and out that you get some protein some carbs um, mm-hmm. it's amazing when you're going into these high stake things if your blood sugar has dropped you're not going to perform your best and so something as simple as eating a healthy snack a package of nuts, then checking your teeth to make sure that they're mm-hmm. looking good as you go into the interview. But those kinds of things can really make a difference in how you feel and how you present. It's interesting you talk about the clutter. You can tell how my life is going based on the clutter. If it is clear and, and you know and my, my car is clean and my space is clean, I'm probably doing well, and you know I know that it gets cluttered because I'm not, because my mind is cluttered and I allow it to clutter around me. <clears throat> I'm sure that you guys work with folks on just how to sort of clean the you know mental clutter, but then also as simple as clean up the bedroom. Yeah, simple clear it as out. That. And I think you know this is what I learned. So I raised four boys; they're all grown men now. Um, and sometimes the clutter is so overwhelming that you need to have a place to start. So I would sit on the floor with them and I would say, okay, right now we're gonna just focus on picking up Legos. 
We're just going to put the Legos in this basket. So rather than worrying about all the clutter that can feel overwhelming, let's pick one thing and let's work on that one thing. And I think that's the other key to this is trying to focus on one thing at a time and create a plan for yourself and write the steps out. If you follow them, great. If you take a deviation, fine. But start with a plan. So the, the Legos in job search could be reaching out to a trusted confidant. Have them look at your resume. That, that, that could be the equivalent. That could be what the What is equivalent. your one thing? What's the one What's thing one you're going to focus on? you're going to do today? Oh, I love it. Um, switching topics just a tiny bit, still very much related, but what does Career Path do for our community and the state? Just want to give you a moment to talk about your wonderful organization. Oh, thank you. Well, um, our purpose statement is breaking the spirit of poverty through the dignity of work. And really what we're uh, trying to accomplish across the state of Washington is to create opportunities for people to access better lives for themselves and their families. And we do it through a whole lot of different ways. We operate a lot of programs. We partner in a lot of systems. So we do that here in Spokane. It was actually our incubator where we try a lot of our great work. We love it. Um, and we have really learned that um, while workforce development is our primary focus, you can't just focus on the workforce development side. You've got to look at the whole human, and then you have to figure out who within the partnership or who within the community does those things well. We don't want to be everything to everyone. We want to do our work really well. We want to bring people together so that we're tapping into their strengths, because when we work together, we really do have a shot at eradicating poverty, and that is done through access and opportunity to good jobs. I love it. I do want to, um, <clears throat> I guess, sort of brag on your behalf. Um, you lead an organization <clears throat> that at times I'm sure it can be somewhat challenging, but you are legitimately concerned with partnership in a good way. Um, when you say that you want a partner to find your role, I have never seen an organization do it with such intent and commitment as I see Career Path doing that. So thank you for um, not only your values, but really living them. And you all live them every single day and show that to the community and everyone that you work with. And I've worked with you for a very long time now, and I have never seen anything besides that. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, what, a, what a great organization. OK, I'm going to switch gears again just a tiny bit. And I'm just going to ask you some, 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 some questions. Good? OK. OK. Let's go. All right. What are you proudest of um, in your career? Proudest in my career? I would say it's the work that we have been doing on race, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Over the last three years, we have made an intentional, we've been intentional about putting equity at the center of every decision that we make. Um, and we still have a long ways to go, and we've made great strides. Mm. What is your one big thing that you're going to be working on in the next few years, decade? Well, I think that my next big thing I want to work on is I want to change our question. Um, and I don't know exactly what the new question is mm. going to be, but I've been to a lot of conferences lately, and we have been talking about the same problems for the 20 years that I've been doing this work. Mm -hmm. Things like People don't know who we are in workforce development, mm -hmm. or we aren't creating access points, which I know we've made great strides, mm -hmm. but I think we have to change up what we're talking about. Hmm. Um, and so I, 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 I want to figure out what that big question is that we want to answer next, um, because I think that there's, there's more for us to do, because right now the people that we're talking about today on this podcast, the people who are looking for work that want to work and they cannot seem to connect to work, how do we connect with them in a meaningful way so that they can make progress in their goals? Mm, I love it. And lastly, and most importantly, what is the nerdiest thing you have ever done in workforce development? And I will give you one that I give as an example, just so you have a moment to think. When I started, we didn't have um, online job postings. Not really, right? It was just starting up. I mean, it tells you how long I've been doing this, right? So we have not really, we, we didn't really have online, online job postings. We didn't have access to the labor market information at our fingertips like we do now. 
So I used to count the number of job postings in the spokesman review um, overall and then by um, um, sector so I could see if the uh, if industries were in, improving or, or declining. Pretty nerdy. And I did oh, it, it um, every Sunday for a year <laughs> just, so, just so I could see. Um, yeah. Now I know what drives you <laughs> to get good data. <laughs> there we go. What is your nerdiest moment? Okay. So... I've been doing this a long time too. 20, it'll be 20 years in October. Um, and I started out working with dropout youth. And this actually started in my home, not in the workplace. So again, four sons, raised four sons. Um, and it was time for my oldest son to start looking for a job. So I knew that he needed to wear a tie. No one in my household knew how to tie a tie. <laughs> so we bought a tie, we tied a tie, and that became the job interview tie that went from child to child to child. Oh. And we never untied it. They just oh. put it over their head and out. So when I started working with youth, I went to Goodwill and I bought 100 ties. Oh at a dollar a piece, <laughs> and we were doing a summer youth program, and I taught every young adult that we were working with how to tie a tie, male, female, they, and everybody left with a tied tie, so they would be oh. interview ready at any time. I don't know that that counts as nerdy. That is very heartwarming, but you still have earned your workforce nerd shirt. I have been waiting for this. <laughs> I know. I know. Here's your 20 year anniversary workforce nerd oh, <laughs> commemorative <thank you>. shirt. <laughs> thank you, Cami Eakins, Career Path Services CEO. Thanks so much for everything you do. And thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Here you go. Thank you. Yeah.